name's Heido, and welcome to the Pantheon, where today we're having a look at Commander 2021 and one of the brand new Red Blue Commanders. And she's really quite interesting. It's Varen, Voice of Duality. A three mana 2-2 two -two with Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, Varen, Voice of Duality, gets plus one plus one until end of turn. Prowess, but in a different name. If you're casting, if you casting or copying an instant or sorcery spell causes a triggered ability or a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So that second bit means that a magecraft doesn't just give a plus one plus one, it gives plus two plus two. It's, it's mega magecraft, you know, we'll add mega onto something to make it better. And then she's got some wonderful artwork. I, I think it, she, look, it, she just looks incredible. She knows having a, a wonderful time. Dancing with all the uh, molten nightmares. Yeah. And then, what else more can you say? Nothing. So we'll zoom back into my face. This is a really cool commander, and you can build her in sort of an aggro way. There are a lot of things that trigger off of her second ability, but that sort of mega price is what I'm interested in today. But without further ado, please subscribe to my channel. I make tons of these videos, you know, I'm trying to make one for every single legendary creature that's ever existed. It's gonna take a while, but I'll get there eventually. So let's have a look at number five. And in at number five, we've got Adelise, the Cinderwind. Three mana for a two, two with flying and haste. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, wizards you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. I'd take this deck down a sort of wizardy tribal sort of route. And this gives all of our wizards prowess essentially. And it's a flying hasty beta. Pretty damn cool. To go along this prowess, it'll trigger twice off of our commander's ability. So all of these creatures have prowess. I'll skip over that. But there's a couple of cool interactions going on. Abbot of Curl Keep is a two mana two one. And when it enters the battlefield, exile the top card of your library until end of turn. You may play that card. Nice bit of card advantage attached to our prowess beta. Nibblist of Frost is a 4 mana 3-3 three, three with flying and prowess. And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its controls next and tap step. So that would actually trigger twice from us casting an instant sorcery spell. So for every, every cantrip we cast, we tap down two things and they remain tapped for a while. Then we've got Heartfire Immolator. 2 mana for a 2-2 two, two with prowess. Sensing a theme. Pay a red, sacrifice it. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker. Excellent bit of removal. Yes, we lose our creature, but we can swing in with it and then sacrifice it to deal with a big threat. Curious Homunculus is a two mana one one that doesn't have prowess yet. You can tap it to add a colorless to your mana pool, spend this mana only to cast an instant or sorcery spell. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are three or more instant or sorceries in your graveyard, Transform it. But what does it transform into? Zoop. Voracious Reader. An Eldrazi Homunculus. Which, uh, you know, this artwork is really, really awesome. Uh, I don't know, quite know why its eyeball has lined with teeth. Like, why are its uh, sort of eyelashes teeth? I don't understand that. But it has prowess. Oh and instant sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. Really, really good. Then, Bedlam Reveler, 8 mana for a 3 4. Cost 1 less for each instant sorcery card in your graveyard. Has prowess. Who would have thought? And then, when it enters the battlefield, discard your hand and draw 3 cards. This can be a nice refill if we've run out of some uh, cards. And we can get back into the game. The artwork is also fantastic. Which brings me on to number 4 Thousand Year Storm. 6 mana for an enchantment. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Copy it for each other instant sorcery spell you've cast before it this turn. You may choose new targets for the copies. So this is a trigger from a permanent, so it'll be get doubled by our commander. So we it, it, everything will just get out of control and you won't know what's happening on the stack, but you, you, you'll have the general idea that it's very good for you. Further to this, Aria Flame. These are all sort of a Magecraft sort of esque triggers. Aria Flame, three mana enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent gains 10 life. 
We're a group hug deck. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, put a verse counter onto Arya Flame. Then it deals damage equal to the number of verse counters on its target player or planeswalker. So each time we cast one, it'll get two verse counters. And you can see it'll spiral very quickly out of control. So soon, very soon after five instant sorceries, we'll be dealing 10 per spell. Oh, actually, no. It'll be... I don't know how much it'll be. It'll be a lot, basically, is what I'm saying. Well, do the maths yourself. I'm not into maths. I just want to attack with creatures. Archmage Emeritus is a 4-mana 2-2 with Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant sorcery spell, draw a card. Very, very powerful. This can really refill our hand. And we're going to be playing a lot of cheap instant sorceries to buff off our commander. And from each of them, we're going to be drawing a card. Similar to this, Stormkill Artisan is a 4-mana 2-2. A good, a good, a good sort of stat line. Four mana two twos over here. Four mana two twos over there. It gets plus one, plus one, and for each artifact you control and magecraft. Whenever you cast an or copy an instant sorcery spell, create a treasure token. So from all of our cantrips, we're going to be getting mana back as well. So we pay one mana, get a treasure that makes us one mana. But thanks to our commander, that magecraft will trigger twice. So we'll actually be making mana from every single one of these interactions. Which brings me on to number three. Gutter Snipe. Mm. A Goblin Shaman. Three mana for a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Gutter Snipe deals two damage to each opponent. So, usually, you know, Commander, we play a spell, deals two to each opponent. That's six damage. Now, <laughs> with, with our Commander... We play, play an instant of the sorcery spell, so a pump, a pump spell for one mana. We're dealing 12 damage total. Really, really powerful interaction. And it, it will just win you games. Electrostatic field, very similar. Two mana for a zero four defender. Whenever you cast an instant of sorcery spell, it deals one damage to each opponent. So that's double to two. Really, really nice. Ral Storm Conduit, very similar. Four mana for a four loyalty planeswalker. Whenever you cast or copy an instant sorcery spell, it deals one damage to target opponent or planeswalker. So, two. And then you can plus two to scry one or minus two. When you cast your next instant sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. So we can, you know, uh, if we've got a big spell, copy it. Really, really nice to have this on the field. Then Thermo Alchemist, two mana for a zero three defender. Wall Tribal here. Thermal, tap Thermalchus deals one damage to each opponent. Whenever you cast uh, an instant sorcery spell, untap Thermalchus. So we're going to untap it twice. So in response to the second untap, we untap it once. Then we ping. Then we untap again. And then it's ready to ping again. Really, really cool. Then we've got a couple of token makers, which are very, very powerful with our instant sorceries. Young Pyromancer. Uh, two mana, two one. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, create a one one red elemental creature token. So we get two one ones. Ooh, splendid. Then metallurgic summonings. Five mana enchantment. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, create an X X cause construct artifact creature token. What X that spells convert a mana cost? Exactly the same as young pyromancer. We get an additional token. But then, if you have uh, five mana, you can exile metallurgic summonings. Return all instant sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand. Activate this ability only if you control six or more artifacts. So the tokens that this creates are artifacts. We're going to be, we're in blue and red, so we're going to be running a lot of artifact ramp. And this can just refill our hand so that we can just go absolutely mental again and buff our commander into high heaven. Murmuring Mystic, four mana for a 1-5. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, get a 1-1 one, one blue bird. We get two. Whew, breaking the game. Which brings me on to number... Two. In at number two, we've got Fists of Flame. Awesome card. Two mana. For an instant, draw a card. Until end of turn, tag creature gains trample and gets plus one plus O oh for each card you've drawn this turn. So if we've got cast a bunch of cantrips, you know, drawn a bunch of cards, we're going to be giving our commander plus X plus O, oh, you know, plus seven plus O oh, and trample. But because of the mega prowess, it'll already be absolutely massive. So the trample is great. We can absolutely one-shot someone with this card. 
And if we, you know, copy it, we're going to be doing it multiple times and drawing a bunch of cards. To go along with this, we've got a bunch of other cards that just draw cards. The prowess will take care of pumping the creature itself, but we want to churn through our deck and draw a bunch of cards. Trillion Wisps, one blue for an instant. Tag creature becomes blue until end of turn. Untap that creature. So if someone's tapped down our commander, I, I don't know how or why, we can untap it and then we draw our card. Then sometimes our opponents have blockers, those, those bad, bad men. Slip through space is a one blue uh, sorcery with devoid, so it has no color. Doesn't affect much. Tag creature can't be blocked this turn. Draw a card so our commander can just slide in there for tons of damage. Finally, Crimson Wisps, one red for an instant. Tag creature comes red and gains haste on line of turn. Very powerful effect. Oh, also draw a card. This is powerful because sometimes our commander will get removed and we can play it. Then we can play this on it so we can get in straight away for tons of damage. Then we've got Expedite, very similar. It's, well, it's the exact same card basically, except it doesn't make it red. Uh, Tiger Ridge against Haste on the turn, draw a card. Really, really nice, keeps going through the deck. Shadow Rift is a blue instant. Uh, Tiger Ridge against Shadow on the end of turn, which means it can block, uh, it can, it can, <laughs> it can block or be blocked by only creatures with Shadow. That, that sentence feels off. It doesn't feel right. And then you draw a card. So the likelihood our opponents are going to play a shadow creature. Pretty damn slim. And then we can just slam in for tons of damage. Finally, crash through. One red for a sorcery. Creature control can trample. So it's not the greatest evasion. But we can power through our opponent's board state. Draw a card. Drawing cards is honestly one of the best things you can do in magic. But... Mirrorwing Dragon is sort of the, the secret commander for this deck. Five red for a four five with flying. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell that targets only Mirrorwing Dragon, that player copies that spell for each other creature he or she controls that that spell could target. Each copy targets a different one of those creatures. So with all of these cards that we've just uh, been playing, you know, we could target Mirrorwing Dragon, and if we have a large board state with all our tokens that we made and all incidental little creatures, we're going to copy it for every single one of those creatures. So all of those cards that drew us one card will now draw us about 80 cards, and it just spirals out of control with our commander because, because this is an ability that's triggering from our commander, it'll trigger twice, so it, it's just an absolute nightmare. Yes, our opponent could cast a removal spell on Mirrorwing Dragon, but then they'd be removing their entire board because it's each creature that player controls. It's so, so cool. To go along with this, we've got Zada Hedron Grinder. Four mana, three, three. Whenever you cast an insult sorcery spell that targets only Zada Hedron Grinder, copy that spell for each other creature you control that that spell could target. Each copy targets a different one. Exactly the same text. Cool. Cool, it's a goblin, it's an uncommon. It's great. Chaos Warp is something that co you could use on your own creatures with these uh, sort of interactions where you will get rid of all of your tokens and everything else and then just flip over your deck and hopefully you'll get a ton of stuff back. Really, really awesome interaction and can lead to some game winning plays. Finally, Beam Splitter Mage, two mana for a two two. Whenever you cast an insult sorcery spell that targets only Beam Slitter Mage, if you control one or more other creatures that spell could target, choose one of those creatures, copy that spell. It's a very much lesser version of Zada, but it works along the same sort of axis, and you know, our commander triggers it twice. Really, really awesome commander, and who would have thought a prowess commander would exist? You know, it'd be something that you'd be interested in playing. Really, really awesome. I really like the card and it can be really quite powerful and, you know, end up with some ridiculous things happening. So thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please subscribe, like and comment and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.